Shoof International Limited have developed a range of products to assist the veterinarian, hoof specialist and dairyman in quickly and easily treating lameness in cattle. This film shows the use of these products and also some basic principles to follow in treating lameness. The most important rule about treating lameness would be take action immediately lameness is noticed. Small problems rapidly become big problems. When you have several animals to examine, it is best to wash all the feet first, then walk the animals around and note carefully which feet are causing the lameness. It is advisable to write notes, taking special notice of animals with more than one sore foot. Hoofnack is a small machine which takes the fight out of treating lameness. Even very active animals are tamed with this simple device. For the veterinarian, it is compact enough to include with his or her normal range of equipment. For the dairyman who attends to his own cattle lameness problems, the hoofnack is a convenient tool which can prevent the damage to man and beast often accompanying a leg roping job. The rope is simply attached at the hock and the leg winched up. A safety release feature is incorporated. Having a beast immobilized with the hoof at a convenient height and angle is essential to conducting a good examination. The first step when looking at a hoof should be to check the cleft for any obstruction. Removing a stick or stone here can give an instant remedy. Use your hoof knife to fully explore the sole. After checking the most obvious damage, be sure to check and explore any other small but suspicious cracks or discolorations. All too often, only the obvious problem is treated when the real cause of lameness may be under a very small hole or crack. If squeezing the claw with hands or with hoof testing pliers produces some fluid, then you must explore the source of this fluid, even if it is quite deep. A search knife is essential for this task. In New Zealand conditions, it is common for the toe to become overgrown, causing excessive wear on the heel. To correct this, the toe should be shortened as much as possible. Reducing the toe length and thickness allows the weight of the animal to move forward, relieving the thin heel area from load. Before fitting, the shoof must be tested for size on the hoof. The correct size must be used. Shoof vet rope should then be used to secure the leg in the correct position for fitting the shoof. Vet rope is a thick, soft, non-burning rope with an eye spliced in one end. The rope is attached to the leg and around the rail. Then the hoof neck is released and the leg is pulled up tight. Just a single loop around the leg gives best results. Shoof must never be fitted with the leg in a raised position, as this causes the flexor tendon to contract. This contraction expands the hoof ankle area where the shoof is tied. If applied like this, the shoof will be a poor fit when the leg is released. The leg must be extended when fitting the shoof. The packet of copper sulphate must be immersed in water for at least one minute before being applied unopened to the hoof. The special shoof bandage is then applied, ensuring it is wrapped right up to the dew claws. This will prevent chafing by the shoof. The bandage end is simply tucked in. Tying is not required. The shoof is then applied. In this case, the hoof damage was quite mild, so a standard model sole is used, giving even weight distribution. The string ends must then be cut off 
to prevent the shoof being accidentally pulled off. With the right equipment, treating a sore foot can be quick, easy and painless for all. In more serious cases, a hoof may require a second inspection after seven to ten days. In this case, a very badly infected abscess has healed nicely, even though the cow has been walking in very dirty conditions. The shoof bandage has acted like a filter, keeping the dirt out and the copper sulphate in. Notice how the copper sulphate has penetrated the horn, healing and hardening the tissue like a permanent foot bath. Using a shoof refill kit, a new packet of copper sulphate and bandage are applied and a new string tie is laced to the shoof. In this case, a special elevated model of shoof is used. The elevation must be on the healthy claw, relieving the load-bearing of the affected claw. This shoof is a right elevated model. The pink colour denotes the smallest size shoof. Often this elevation will give instant relief to a very lame animal. Here is a front hoof which has a deep undercut filled with dirty water. This undercut must be completely exposed to allow new horn tissue to grow. All unsecured horn must be removed. A left elevated model of the yellow size shoof is used. This will transfer all load to the healthy claw. The special shoof packet and bandage are again applied. The shoof bandage conforms nicely to the hoof shape and will not come out of the shoof. Using genuine refill kit components is essential for successful use of the shoof. Non-standard materials can cause failures. When applying shoof, the string tie must be pulled very tightly. The straps should then be checked for a good fit on the hoof before the knot is secured. It is almost impossible to over tighten the string as when the animal walks on the shoof, the bandage will be compressed, easing the string tension. Again we see quick acceptance of the shoof and early relief of pain. The shoof range is available worldwide and includes the following products for treatment of cattle lameness. Hoof neck for lifting legs, shoof, the shoe for a hoof, shoof refill kit for reuse of shoof, shoof vet rope, the soft safe rope. The sore feet are a pain guide to hoof care. Shoof International Limited, Post Office Box 522 Cambridge, New Zealand.